Brethren, let us bow for a moment and let's pray. Abba Father, we give you this time and we ask for your Holy Spirit to take control. And we ask this in the most precious name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, good morning again, brethren. Before going to our text today, here's a brief history about the church in Corinth. Paul started the church in Corinth on one of his ministry, uh, missionary journeys as recorded in Acts 18. Along the way, there was a report regarding a big problem in the church. Paul wrote the first Corinthians to address the problems. It appeared that many of the church rejected Paul's teaching and rebelled against his authority. Paul followed up in person with what he called a painful visit. Then Paul sent the second letter, which he said was written with anguish and tears. All of these measures, most but not all of the Corinthians realized their arrogance and they apologized to Paul. Second Corinthians was then written to reassure Paul's love and commitment to the Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 to 15, our text today, Paul addressed the Corinthians about the topic of forgotten generosity. So if you're looking for the title of today's message, I entitled it, The Forgotten Generosity. The cross, the forgotten generosity. Verse 7 says, But since you excel in everything, in faith and speech and knowledge, in complete earnest, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. The Jewish Christian in Jerusalem have fallen to poverty due to a famine. Paul raised relief money from the new churches, mostly non-Jews, for the Jewish believers in Jerusalem. Paul emphasized that the gift would be the symbol of unity of Messiah Jesus. As we all know, there were issues between the Jews and the non-Jews believers. The Macedonians, the Galatians already gave. The Corinthians, in the midst of their issues, haven't saved for the gift. Paul emphasized that is, this, this really isn't about the money. They haven't been transformed by the gospel about Jesus, which at its, its heart is a story of generosity. Paul reminded the Corinthians of the cross, the forgotten generosity of God. In verse 7, it says, Also excel in this grace of giving. Why also excel in the grace of giving? There are three reasons. First, it is because of one's God's character traits in which we can overtly participate and in that participation demonstrate the generosity of God. God is sovereign. We can never be sovereign. God is omnipotent. We can never be omnipotent. God is all-knowing. We can never be all-knowing. God is generous and we can be generous so god's characteristic of generosity gives gives us the opportunity to make it a reality to others how by giving gifts money goods to others to meet legitimate needs especially our brethren we are overtly demonstrating god's character of generosity the second reason why giving because it is one of the undisputable proofs of a cruciform life verse 9 says for you know the grace of our lord jesus christ that though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. 
what is a cruciform life? In Christian theology, cruciform means that all of life and indeed all of existence is focused on to reshape by the cross upon Jesus was executed. The vertical structure of the cross symbolizes our relationship with God. And the horizontal structure of the cross symbolizes our relationship with other human beings. Hence, a cruciform life is having the right relationship with God and the right relationship with others. The depth and intensity of our vertical relationship with God is overtly manifested by our horizontal relationship with others. Even if we can quote the scriptures until we turn blue, but if our lives has no deeds to show love for others, what's the benefit? Head knowledge of the scriptures will not produce the desired resort of equality among brothers, generosity does. This is the very essence of verse 13 when Paul said, Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you were hard pressed, but there might be equality. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ live a life on earth demonstrating a perfect vertical relationship with God the Father and a perfect horizontal relationship with us. Jesus obeyed God the Father by laying down his life for us at the cross. The cross is all about self-giving. A cruciform life is a Christ-centered life, living a life like Jesus. This means a life transformed by Christ. The cross is the story of God's generosity. So, as God's children, generosity should be our DNA. Jesus, God the Father's greatest treasure, was given to us. Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, adorned with honor and wealth, lowered himself, came down and lived among us, died as a poor slave, so that we who are impoverished through sin and death will become rich through God's grace. Jesus gave up everything for us. To be a Christian is to let this story sink deep in our mind and our heart, letting it transform us into someone who is more generous, more willing to share our life and resources to help others. While Jesus was on earth, he showed us a life of generosity, not only in the aspect of money. His life and ministry while on earth taught us that we can give more than monetary offerings. We can give water to the thirsty, food to the hungry, visit to the lonely, and prayer to the people who are hurting. When we are generous, we're saying to Jesus, we love him. And we're telling Jesus that we love those he loves. I'd like to share a personal testimony on giving or generosity which I wrote as a tribute to the late Peggy Scatibu on October 8, 2020. Our God is truly an amazing God. His ways are not our ways. There is only one requirement for us to do. That is to obey and leave God the rest. This was exactly how the Scatibus fulfilled one of my prayers in life. I met the Scatibus through Kuya Lani, Kuya is the Tagalog term for older brother, and Ati Yoli Dilion, 
ate is the Tagalog term for older sister. I was part of the Navigators Ago Student Ministry. I did not, mo did not know much about this category. I graduated from college in 1990. I got my first job at the church secretary of our church, Ago Christian Fellowship, after my graduation. The house where my parents and siblings were living in Cabala Union at that time is like a leaning tower. It was only the electrical wiring and a strong cable connected to the electrical post and the three bamboo trunks put on the leaning side of the house that was preventing it from totally falling to the ground. The house had old, rusty, galvanized iron sheet as a roof and a braided coconut leaves as walls. I was not living with my parents since third year high school as Pastor Rick Cleveland and his family accommodated me at their house in Agola Union. So I decided that my first project with my salary would be the repair of my parents' house. Then, the July 16 killer earthquake hit. Imagine the entire house leaning, shaken by 7.8 magnitude earthquake with maximum intensity of nine, considered violent, with successive numerous aftershocks. It was just in a matter of time that my parents' house would kiss the ground. Our church building was also heavily damaged by the earthquake. A building fundraising for our church was launched. I was convicted by the message in Haggai 1.4 that says, Is it time for you yourself to be living in your paneled houses while this house remained a ruin? By faith, I decided that the small amount of money I barely saved for two months by my parents' house repair to give it all to the church for building fun. God honored my faith. A miracle happened. One day, Koyalani approached me and asked if I knew of any house damaged by earthquake because they still have one slot house for remaining. Kuya Ulani was given a budget for 10, 10 houses or 10 recipients. He already disposed nine. So there's still one more remaining for a qualified family. Kuya Ulani said it is better to use it than to return it to the donor. Jokingly, I told Kuya Ulani that my parents' house needed a repair. I showed the picture to Kuya Ulani. He was shocked to see the terrible condition of my parents' house. He said of all the recipients, my parents are the most qualified. To make this story short, my parents' house was repaired. The very little amount I gave for the repair of our church building was replaced by God a hundredfold. To put, to put it in a monetary amount, I could not remember the exact amount that I gave to the church building, probably around 1,000 pesos with one to 50 conversion. That's around $20, not much. But it was not the amount that good look upon, but my desire and faith that honored God. The cost of the repair of my parents' house was approximately 20,000 pesos with one to 50 conversion that around $400. I cannot ex remember the exact amount. The repair did not include the replacement of the roof. With my meager salary as the church secretary, it would have taken me years to save 20,000 pesos. Brethren, we can never outgive God. Later, I discovered that the generous donor for the repair of my parents' house were the Scottibles. Through the Scottibus' generous and loving hearts, my parents and siblings were given a better house to stay in. I cannot thank God and the Scottibus more than enough. It was so amazing. My half-brother, who was an unbeliever at the time, 
knocked and said, What's the use of a newly repaired house with old rusty roof? That he said. I told him, Whatever God started, he will surely finish it. Just what's in sea. True enough, the following month, the Star of Hope, a nonprofit organization, came to the church and donated galvanized iron sheet for all houses that were qualified. My parents were qualified because our house had old, rusty, galvanized iron sheets. My parents had a brand new house. The Scottibus confirm and affirm the faithfulness of God in my life. The Scottibus pave a way for me to trust God. God, because of this experience with the Scottibus, I learned to trust God more for the impossible. My life was never the same. For indeed, after my faith with the house came my faith adventure to become a lawyer. Indeed, God, God is faithful and answered my prayer. I took my oath as a lawyer in the Philippines in May 1997. Brethren, God has continually manifested in his goodness and faithfulness to me, showing that he is capable of anything we could imagine. To him be the glory, honor, and praise. I thank the Scatabus for unknowingly impacting my life. They not only impacted my life, but my entire family and the generation to come. Because of their generosity, I'm on a mission to do it forward. It's so amazing that God is looking for our desire and willingness to give and not the amount. That's stated in verses 10 to 13. Remember the poor widow's offering that Jesus honored? Jesus said the poor widow outgave all of them because the others gave out of, their, out of their surplus. But she gave everything she had out of her poverty. We can never outgive God. So be a cheerful giver. Why deny God the opportunity to bless us? The crucial question is, how can we be generous? Only in abiding and remaining with Jesus, our Lord. As we previously learned, to remain and abide with Jesus, we need just, hang, we need just to hang with Jesus. The Holy Spirit has shown me through reading God's word in prayer and in answered prayer that God is generous. And he certainly showed that to me in the crucifixion of his son. The cross is the lavish display of God's generosity to mankind. Knowing God's generosity has helped me live a more generous life. The third reason why giving, to have equality in God's body. Verse 13 says, our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard-pressed, but there might be quality. Verse 14 says that at the present time, your plenty will supply what they need so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. Verse 15, as it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Apostle said that the desired resort is equality. We give according to our ability. It is not the amount, but our willingness to give. It is never, never a burden to be generous. On the contrary, God solves our problem of lacking through our generosity. Like in my personal experience, I gave all I have, my 1,000 pesos or $20, to help in our church building. Our church was repaired, and God 
through the Scottibus and the Star of Hope, a nonprofit organization. My parents have a new brand. Uh, my parents have a brand new house. Brethren, again, why giving? Because generosity is one of God's character traits, and we can overtly participate, and in that participation, demonstrate the goodness of God to His praise and His glory. Second reason, because it is one of the undisputable proofs of a cruciform life, a transformed life. The third, and to have equality in God's body. So our challenge for today, always remember, we can never outgive God. Why deny God the opportunity to bless us? So brethren, let us go out to the world to be the hands and feet of Jesus. To God be the glory.